If you lay out all the baseball cards Phil Necro ever appeared on, you'll see the evolution from fresh-faced prospect to grizzled granddaddy-like future Hall of Famer. It's the same transformation you'll see on most longtime players, but it's all exaggerated in Nico's case. Even though he got a late start in the majors, the Braves legend is still a fresh face in all those early cards. He was already in his 30s, though, by the time he reached superstardom, so Collector spent most of his career watching gray hair become grayer and that funky knuckleballer motion become stiffer. But seeing how Negro pitched into the late 1980s and for, like, centuries, he appeared on a ton of baseball cards. Too many to run through all at once. What we can run through, though, are all the Phil Necro baseball cards from the 1960s, when he was an up-and-comer and when no one really knew he was a multi-generational phenomenon in the making. So let's do it, starting with 1962 through 1965, Jay Publishing, Phil Necro. Jay Publishing produced 12 card picture packs for a number of major league teams from 1958 through 1965, with a switch from San Sharif to Sharif Font breaking the run in two. Old Phil Necro made his appearance with the Milwaukee Braves here in the Type 2 cards, and you gotta figure he showed up near the end of the run, considering he didn't debut in the majors until 1964. The knuckler is coming at you in brilliant black and white on this 5x7 card, complete with a tractor in the background. And a misspelling. Classic hobby fair right there. 1964 Tops Braves Rookies. Phil Roof and Phil Negro, number 541. I suppose you could call this one the Phil's Rookie, seeing how, you know, both guys were named Phil. Seemed the Braves were hedging their bets, hoping at least one of the fills would pay off. Or maybe it was Tops who was hedging their bets. Either way, both of them featured Phil Necro and Phil Roof, though the former didn't exhaust his rookie status until 1965, and the latter hung on to his rookiness until 1966, by which time he was with the Kansas City A's. Roof did okay, though, crafting 15-year big league career that normally would have given him counting supremacy over his cardboard partner. Who could have known Negro would tack on nearly another decade to his could-have-been battery mate's tally? 1965 Tops Braves Rookies with Clay Carroll, Phil Negro, number 461. So this would have been more conventional two for a rookie had Negro not already scored a rookie card the year before. But at least Carroll was a cardboard virgin. Carroll would go on and lead the National League with 73 appearances in 1966, the same season Topps featured him on the exquisite card that foreshadowed Jack Torrance in The Shining. Atlanta traded Carroll to the Cincinnati Reds halfway through the 1968 season, and he ended up throwing a lot of games for them, too, and tasting a lot of postseason nectar. Negro ended up pitching forever, and he got just a couple of light October snacks in 1969 and in 1982. 1966 tops Phil Negro, number 28. Finally, at the age of 71, Phil Negro finally got his first solo card in the 1966 top set. Okay, he wasn't 71. He actually looked kind of sort of young on this card. Hopefully, Braves fans and collectors were able to fully appreciate the moment because middle age would set in all too soon. 1967 Tops Phil Necro, number 456. Fine. So middle age didn't come to Necro in 1967 either, but his first real taste of big league success did. He led the National League with a 1.87 ERA and a 179 ERA+. Plus because ERA Plus was really big stuff in the late 1960s. Oh yeah, Necro also led the circuit with 19 wild pitches. That probably worked to his advantage, because I'll bet it hurts to get hit by a Major League Baseball knuckleball, no matter how much crap those dudes take for their fluff speeds. While he was on the mound hammering stuff down, flutteringly, collectors were pulling this nifty 1967 Topps Necro card from Pex. 1968 Dexter Press Postcards, Phil Necro. Dexter Press was once the maker of fine postcards, with subjects ranging from the World's Fair to the Crazy Horse scale model to West Nyack, New York. And from 1966 to 68, they made baseball card postcards that were tied to Coca-Cola giveaways in some way. 
These things were downright gorgeous, too. To my eyes, Necro is starting to look a bit peaked around the eyes, hinting at the old dude to come. But he's beautiful, too, and his arms over his head against the blue sky on his 1968 Dexter press card. 1968 tops National League ERA leaders Jim Bunning, Chris Short, Phil Necro, number 7. This card was Necro's reward for winning the ERA title in 1967. The Dexter Press piece was a nice perk, too. Necro doesn't just appear on the National League ERA leaders card with Hall of Famer Jim Bunning and his Phillies Phils teammate Chris Short, though. No, Necro is the headliner. Take that, Senator. 1968 tops Phil Necro, number 257. Of course, Necro got his own burlap bordered card in the 1968 top set, a close up version of the Dexter Shark, sort of. I mean, his hands are over his head, at least. Cut off sleeves instead of a warm up jacket under his Braves jersey this time, and he doesn't have his Michael Douglas working quite as well as he did on his Dexter press card. Still, a classic 1960 card of a budding star. 1969, Milton Bradley, Phil Necro. As black and white Phil Necro cards from the 1960s go, this one comes in a shade or three below the J Publishing entry that led off our list. But the Milton Bradley cards are pretty neat considering they came as part of an actual game that lets you play baseball right there on your countertop, and that there are 296 cards in the set. This Necro number is just a headshot, and you usually find it with perforated marks around the edges since the cards were all sheeted up as part of the game. Cool stuff, if not all that pretty. 1969 Major League Baseball Photo Stamps Phil Necro In both 1968 and 1969, the Major League Baseball Players Association issued stamps and an accompanying album of 216 players. That's nine for each of the 24 Major League teams. Originally issued in sheets, most of the singles you'll find today were at some point cut by hand and presumably scissors from their sticky paper brethren. The Necro stamp features a full color shot showing Necro with his hands over his head and wearing a warm-up jacket under his Braves jersey. Hmm, sound familiar? And look familiar too, if you've ever seen Necro's 1968 Dexter press card. I think we showed it to you before. 1969 Tops Phil Necro, number 355. To round out Necro's first decade in the major leagues, Tops rolled out this classic baseball pose as part of their 1969 set. Here we see old Phil entering his age 30 season already, following through with his mouth open. Looks like he's jawing at some whippersnappers to me, but Necro never really struck me as that type. But what do I know, though? Well, I do know that Necro was on the cusp of his first 20-win season. He went 23-13 and with a 2.56 ERA to help the Braves win their first ever National League West crown. I also know that he kind of got lit up in Game 1 of the NLCS against the Mets and Tom Seaver, giving up nine runs in eight innings, though only four of them were earned. That would earn Necro's only playoff appearance until 1982 when he went six innings in the Game 2 loss to the St. Louis Cardinals. Gene Garber took the L. Atlanta was swept out of the postseason both years, and Necro never saw October baseball again. His 1969 Topps card is still a beaut, though. Like our video? Then like our videos and subscribe to our channel. WaxPackGods.com